Hello, welcome to this video. Um, today is my birthday, I'm 56 years old. Um, well actually as I speak I'm still 55, I'm filming this before it's my birthday but today actually is my birthday and I thought I'd create a very strange little video to um, just say thanks for everybody who has watched this channel, supported me, everyone who subscribed, everybody who's, who's um, helped me become a Patreon, advise me, you know, give me ideas for videos. Um, people who have put money in the tip jar, oh my God, you know, it's like, you know, I cannot believe I've been so lucky at uh, my time of life after a pretty amazing career really playing music. You know, I've never made a lot of money, but you know, I made a lot of great music and I've met a lot of great people and I've got a lot of great memories. And that's what happens on your birthday. You sit and you look back. It is a wonderful thing to have done that, but for my life to have taken a change. And now I'm a YouTuber. And when I meet young people and they say, what do you do? I say, I'm a YouTuber and they're impressed. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to thank everybody that's helped me out. It's been a wonderful journey. Um, when I started doing this channel, um, well, this, this, this YouTube actually set up 10 years ago and it was originally um, somewhere to put my drum videos. You know, everyone's got a YouTube, so that's what I had. And, you know, I'd stick videos up and sometimes they'd get a couple of hundred views if I was lucky, you know, like most people. And then when COVID happened, um, I got a bit bored one afternoon, so I thought I'd do a video where I would rank uh, the Mavish New Orchestra albums. I can remember setting the camera up and I had a million goes at it because I wasn't used to talking to camera. I wasn't too sure about what I was doing. Um, I didn't know how YouTube worked. So I stuck this video up and it got thousands of views. And so I thought, well, I'll do Weather Report then. You know, I love Weather Report. So I did the Weather Report video and that did a lot of views. And then I started to research. And here we are. Um, so. I'm 56 years old today. Um, in two days' time, it is Narada Michael Walden's um, birthday. Happy birthday, Narada, if you're watching. And uh, around about this time as well, um, how many years ago would it be? I would say two years ago was the time that Narada got in touch with me through this channel because of the videos I'd done. And I suddenly realised I was in a different game altogether. The fact that my hero was approaching me because of the love I'd sent out to him and I suddenly realised the power of, of what this is. Um, and it's Narada's birthday as well. And so this is a special time of year. And in a few weeks' time, um, at the beginning of May, that is the official time because I class the start of this YouTube was when I put that weather report video up. Not the Mavish Nuxtra one, but the weather report. So we're coming up to, how many years is it? Three years now? You know, I'm three years in. We're coming up to 30,000 subscribers. It's incredible. I'm doing over half a million views a month at the moment. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger. And the thing I can't believe is, is that I'm not doing something like, you know, playing Minecraft or what do, what do people do on YouTube, you know, or driving cars off cliffs or climbing up things. I'm talking about the music I love. I'm talking about creativity. I'm talking about art and music. And, 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 and I cannot believe that that has spawned so much interest. This thing that I love has always been a minority thing. So here we are. Um, so thank you all. I am sat in front of the albums that really, um, if they weren't there, I don't think I'd be here now. These albums um, I have carted around for about, I would say, 15 years now without playing them. Um, just because I did want to get hold, rid of them. There's one point where I thought, shall I just sell them all off? What do I need them anymore? It's all on the internet. I could go listen to any album I want now. But I held on to them and here they are. So I'm going to thank you, my lovely albums. And as I look into them, every single one, every single one here is a memory. It's a memory. And I thought what I'd do is I'd just pull out some at random. So here's an interesting one. This, look at this album here. The Sonics. You wouldn't expect me to have this. this the Sonics were possibly the first ever grunge band. 
One of the first ever rock bands, a very, very important album. I didn't realise how important this album was. Um, when Robert Plant gave me this album, was given to me by Robert Plant. So he obviously thought it was a bit important and it has been very important to me as a touchstone of what this channel's about. So what else have we got here? Right, so we can go right back to the first albums that I ever bought. This is actually the second version of this. I lost the first version and somebody said, oh, you know, I mentioned it on the channel. They said, oh, I've got a copy of Let There Be Rock. I just picked up a record for it. This is where I started out. It was with albums like this, ACDC, Iron Maiden, Rainbow, Black Sabbath. That's where it all starts for me. Um, here's one, right? This here is one of my records when I used to make dance music. Have I got that the right way around? Yes, this is a, a, a remix of an um, Indian um, artist called Amma. And in here, I believe as well, I've stored my old career where I used to make white labels. God knows what that is. It's, that is a white label of some weird garage remix that I've done. Um, what else have we got? I've got... Um, Oh, here's another remix. Here's a remix I did of Red Dragon, the reggae artist. It was called Rerun Teens, the Wickerman remix, the uh, two-step remix. So, um, yeah, that is that is what I used to do in the old days. So I've got some of my records in here from when I was making dance music, and I assume I would have some from when of my own albums I've made. Here's an album, progressive rock album, that um, I'm on. The vinyl version of it, you know. So, um, oh, this is this is a beautiful bit of stuff, isn't it? This is. Look at that. Look at that art. Art records, lovely. Can you see that, everybody? Can you see it? <laughs> I can't even get it in the picture. It's so lovely. And if you look, there's a picture. Where am I? Right in the on, at the end there, standing legs akimbo, looking all moody and black and white. You can't really see that. Um, what else have we got in here that would be interesting to pull out? Well, throughout this, there is a smattering of very old records. I'll pull this one out here. Here's one. Jazz Giants. This is my inheritance from my dad. This has got... Um, Harry Edison, Onyx Stan Getz, Jerry Mulligan, Oscar Peets and Herb Ellis, Ray Brown and Louis Belson. Recorded in 1958. This album is an original copy and it belonged to my dad. My dad died in 2015. William Michael Edwards, known as Mike, and uh, he was very important right at the beginning because it was his record collection and his, his love of jazz records that switched me on to music. Uh, I miss my dad every single day. I can't believe he's been gone now for nearly nine years. Um, and he would have loved this. He would have loved what's happening here. And he would have loved... Because um, I think I get... My dad My dad was, was brilliant at explaining stuff. He was brilliant. At, at, when I was a kid, he would explain, Dad, can you tell us how a nuclear bomb works? Or, Dad, you know, what, you know why, why is there... The Second World War, and he would sit and start to explain to you, and he would explain it in a certain way. And I'm sure I picked up from him his way of explaining stuff. And he would go off on tangents, and, and it was always very enjoyable. And um, on an evening, we didn't watch so much the telly when I was young, the TV, television. Um, we would, uh, my dad would put his records on. Back then, you know, when you could smoke in the house, my dad would light his cigarette, and he would smoke a cigarette, and I can remember the smoke billing in the low light, while he played these incredible records that for me, just, this, I'm gonna just pull one more record out of my dad's, I think. Um, I wanna find something that was, I know would have been special to him. And uh, oh, this one, this one's one of my dad's, when he bought this one in the, uh, probably the early 80s. Uh, when my dad was dying, he uh, turned. He turned to me. And he could hardly speak, and uh, he was. He was trying to explain to the nurses that I was a reasonable drummer. He was quite proud of me, which was very touching. And then he turned around to me and he went, um, 
Dave Brubick. He was a musician, wasn't he? And I went, yes, Dad, he was, yeah, incredible. And he mentioned a few other jazz musicians, the real, you know, um, Miles Davis, or, you know, I, th or th I think he, can't remember the, uh, every single, he, went, I think he kept saying he was a great musician. And then he turned around right at the end and he said, and Chuck Berry, he was good too, and had a little laugh to himself. And there's his Chuck Berry album, because my dad, my dad had a, a, a very jazz attitude. He wasn't a rock and roller, my dad, right? But uh, it, was, it was funny that he, he uh, acknowledged that towards the end of his life. Um, and um, let's just pull one more out and then I think I'll be done. I want to get a really old one, if I can. What's that one there? Oh, that's another one of my albums. Um, I'll get one, don't worry. What's that one there? There we go. In the plastic sleeve. That there is the most valuable album in my collection. It's an original copy of the Jazz Couriers, uh, which was Ronnie Scott's band, and it... it, it um, contained at that point one of the great British jazz musicians, Mr. Toby Hayes. And this is a very, very rare album. This is an original copy. Actually, I don't think this is an original copy. Uh, so it might not be as much as worth as much as I was because I was looking at this the other day and I realised it was a musical music for pleasure. So I don't think my dad bought this at the same time. But anyway, it's a classic album recorded in 1958. Um, I wonder when this was made. These albums are like 60 year, over 60 years old. So... Thinking of my dad, thinking of you lot, thinking about music, and uh, thinking about getting one year older, and thinking about all the interesting, exciting stuff we're going to get up to on this channel in the next few years. How exciting it is! So I hope you're all willing to keep with the journey with me. Thanks for those who've been there since the beginning. If you have been there from the beginning, put a comment down below and I'll give you a special message and a special thank you. Because I want to know who they were. Does anybody remembering watching the Mavish Nauction video when it first came out? Right, I'm wondering what this long-haired, hippie-looking bloke was. Ah, oh, music is the best, as Frank Zappa said. Oh, God. I bet they fall for that rubbish, don't they? They'll all be moved now, won't they? A little tear in their eye. <laughs> think I'm a decent bloke, do they? Well, I have another thing coming. They don't know my bloody evil plan for this channel. Oh, I'll, I'll show them. I'll show them. Frustrated drummer that I am. Frustrated musician. Now, now I control the narrative. Now I can tell them all this stuff. And I'll feed them all this weird music, this strange jazz and this strange prog. We know it's all rubbish, really, but we'll feed it to them. And they'll lap it up. They'll lap it all up, they will. And when I've got them all under my spell, then you know what I'll do. You know what I'm going to do. I'll just go up and I'll 